of you. My speech is actually entitled Microfinance, New Paradigms Built on HO Fundamentals to advance further the agenda of making our rural banking system a vital partner of uh, development in our country. I'm trying to get my bearings because I just, I'm just off a uh, uh, congressional uh, hearing <laughs> to discuss other banking issues that have nothing to do with the rural banking industry, fortunately. <clears throat> it is a great pleasure for me to deliver the keynote address during this year's RBAP MAPS National Roundtable Conference. I am certain that this will be another productive gathering of peers and partners where useful discussions and exchanges of relevant ideas can take place. The agenda for this uh, two-day me meeting is filled with very current and exciting topics. Many things are changing. New developments are taking place. Indeed, we are, in my view, in the midst of the formation of a new paradigm of a solid network of stable, self-sustaining, and dynamic rural financial institutions that are capable of mastering leading-edge technologies to serve better the, ba the vast market of the underbanked in our country. Just 15 years ago, when we talk about microfinance in the Philippines, we will most probably be referring to a handful of banks and non-governmental organizations that are providing loans for micro-entrepreneurs, typically through groups and center meetings. This uh, short narration showcases that we are now seeing an industry that has grown leaps and bounds from modest beginnings. The viability of the business of microfinance, the lower barriers to entry, the enabling environment, and the huge potential market has resulted in one, a large number, a larger number, and more diverse set of players. Two, a wider range of products and services, and three, revolutionary changes in the way the services are delivered. It is evident that microfinance is no longer the exclusive domain of banks and other credit providers. There is no scope for new players like telecommunications companies and network service providers, among others. Our issuance of circulars uh, number 649 and 704 on electronic money or e-money, e-money issuers and e-money network service providers recognize these new partners and create a framework for a robust retail payments and mobile banking ecosystem. The regulations also ascertain that all the players are proportionately regulated to ensure consumer protection, financial system stability, and integrity. For all of you, we should present an enormous opportunity to reposition the rural banking system. As banks, you have the advantage of being authorized to provide a wide range of financial services to the general public which the other players are not allowed to do. As rural banks, long embedded in the countryside, uh, in the countryside communities that you serve, you already possess the intimate knowledge and appreciation of your market's preferences and needs. This inherent strength should be leveraged with the services and capabilities that new players bring to create potent partnerships and linkages to reach wider markets at lower cost. As the saying goes, it is most productive to, to stand on shoulders rather than step on toes. We are already seeing these kinds of collaboration bear fruit as banks are able to access new clients and existing clients more efficiently through mobile banking platforms. The increased competition in the market has also led to many innovations in products and delivery channels. This benefits both providers with a wider range of possible products that they can offer, as well as clients who now have more and better options. This is a logical development because experience in the delivery of microfinance show that microfinance clients need a wide range of financial products and services. This is the reason why we now see the proliferation of different types of loans 
a variety of innovative savings accounts, facilities to make payments transfers, and products to insure against risks. Our regulations have deliberately provided scope and space for these innovations. Our issuances on housing microfinance, micro-agri loan products, and microinsurance through circulars number 678, 680, and 683, you'll notice they are in quick succession. Respectively, in our definition of micro-deposits, now allow you to offer a complete suite of products to your clients, thereby increasing the overall value and reputation of your service as well as expanding and diversifying your income streams. Delivery channels and customer interface are also changing. Now, bank clients need not travel uh, to bank head offices and branches for all their transactions and instead can use mobile phones, the internet, or go to a retail outlet or merchant. Again, our regulations have adapted to provide the framework and on how these new channels can be effectively be utilized by banks in a safe manner and one that protects both the bank and its customers. Parallel to developing these new and exciting alternative channels, we also continue to find ways to allow you to innovatively expand your physical branch network. Circular 694 provides the rules and regulations for the establishment of micro-banking offices or MBOs. These MBOs, which should, which should entail lower costs to deploy, allow you to reach areas which may not be economically feasible without this option. Through MBOs, you can provide a wide range of transactional activities targeted to the particular needs of the unserved and underserved market, specifically microfinance clients, overseas Filipinos, and their beneficiaries. This is your opportunity to reach an even wider market for your products and services. With bank branches, ATMs, and MBOs combined with merchants, storefronts, and other e-money cash-in and cash-out agents, we envision a ubiquitous network of touch points where people can easily access financial services, even if transport infra infrastructure remain lagging behind. Another vital element of this framework is the recent issuance of the updated anti-money laundering or AML rules and regulations. AML rules have been identified by many as a major obstacle in serving the unbanked yet bankable market. The lack of necessary IDs, problems of proximity to bank offices, and even the high cost of servicing small uh, transactions have made un the unbanked virtually impossible to reach. This circular directly addresses these obstacles by allowing banks to classify the levels of risk for different types of customers and apply corresponding rules. Given this flexibility, customers with a small account balance and low value transactions may be considered low risk and the, and the bank may use a reduced due diligence and customer acceptance process. The circular also provides scope for the outsourcing of customer identification and KYC requirements to other entities. We sincerely hope that these will be the, ground the groundbreaking measures that can unlock the potential of reaching the large populations of unbanked in our country. I am happy to note that our bold trusts in this frontier are being watched closely as a model by the global community. Many of our PSP um, specialists sit in the, in the policy-making bodies that are now, right now, actively in the global stage formulating the policies that promote greater financial inclusion through our participation in the subcommittees of the G20, which is uh, the global uh, body that coordinates all of these activities. Indeed, the face of microfinance has been transformed. However, unlike a genuine 
paradigm shift where there is a complete change of how things are done, some age-old and time-tested constants remain. First, strong institutions are a prerequisite. The business of banking is a business of trust, and, that, and this trust rests on the stability of your institutions. While there may be a wide array of opportunities available for banks, only the strong and stable ones can effectively seize them. In addition, these strong banks are the ones who will be able to thrive and gain from the benefits of a competitive market. The challenge, therefore, is for you to continue with the reforms that will ensure improved governance and management structures, stronger capital positions and balance sheets, as well as solid and strategic business plans. Making, making sure that all these are in place are central to your interest as rural bankers. The Banco Central is committed to support you in upholding the strength and stability of your banks. Central to this are our efforts towards the improvement of rural banks' capital positions and increased capacities to better manage risks. It is in line with this objective that we have issued Circular Number 696 on the minimum capital requirement for new banks. Banks that are converting to another category, banks that are relocating to an area with a higher classification, or for banks whose total assets or majority of deposit liabilities are in branches located in areas with higher classification. <clears throat> Our risk-based uh, capital advocacy framework for standalone thrift, rural and cooperative banks, on the other hand, aims to enable uh, banks to, number one, better identify, measure, and manage risks. Number two, reduce the level of non-performing assets, thereby strengthening the overall asset quality. And number three, promote greater transparency and market discipline. We are also continuously working on the strengthening program for rural banks, or SPRP, to promote mergers and consolidations as a means to further strengthen the rural banking industry. Second, your business models should be clear. To be successful in microfinance is to fully know and understand the peculiarities and intricacies of its business model. As microfinance has flourished and gained popularity, many have been eager to join the bandwagon. If you do not have the tools, skills, and commitment to microfinance, it will be so easy to follow this wagon. Microfinance requires strict adherence to controls and to monitoring quality. The basic concept of microfinance remains that it is a financial product for clients with a regular cash flow. Not every poor need credit. Not every borrower is an entrepreneur. The design of your product must reflect your full understanding of your market and its needs. Having a clear business model also means abiding and subscribing to the internal policies such as credit underwriting policies which your institutions have crafted. Even in light of rapid growth and ambitious targets, these policies should never be sacrificed or relaxed. This will ensure that the growth of your business is a sustainable one. We must bear this in mind to avoid the type of microfinance crises that happen in other countries like India and Bolivia. Lastly, as banks, your ultimate task is to provide a service to your clients and protect their interest. The advances in the industry are happening at a busy pace, yet we must always be reminded to remain our, to maintain our focus on consumer protection. This is as basic as adequately informing your clients about your basic products, providing your clients with appropriate options and choices, and even supporting your clients to increase their capacities to understand these products. In your experience, I am sure, you know that a happy customer is a good customer. This way, your clients truly become your loyal partners in development. On the part of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, 
after the path-breaking strides in supporting innovation. Our approach to microfinance has been lauded by reputable institutions like the Economist Intelligence Unit and most recently, the World Economic Forum. Indeed, this is something to celebrate. Yet, there is much more that needs to be done. We all know that many are still wanting for financial services. We must remain unrelenting in our objective in increasing financial access to all. I am confident that we have the fundamentals in place to finally unleash the potential of a truly inclusive financial system in this country. We need to continue moving forward, seizing new opportunities while adhering to the time-tested constants as partners in local economic development, rural banks play a central and critical role. Your Banco Central ng Pilipinas will always be there to support you. Thank you very much and I wish you all a productive national.